There is a subtle art to going viral as f and I used it on this exact channel to go from zero to 20,000 subscribers in only six months. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the three pillars that allowed me to blow up fast from scratch. Then you can just copy me and get your first 1,000 subscribers in the next 30 days. Because when you understand how YouTube professionals consistently blow up new channels, you'll start to realize that all of the popular YouTube advice is completely wrong. And then retrain your mind to go viral right now in 2024. So you can start waking up with thousands of new subscribers daily and eventually turn YouTube into your full-time job. The first pillar is the most important decision that you will ever make on YouTube. And getting this wrong will to your channel never seeing the light of day. So listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you because it is the number one reason why 95% of small channels fail. Even if your content is good, great, or the best content that YouTube has ever seen, if you don't pick the right niche, then your videos will go straight to the graveyard. But Lyndon, there are thousands of niches, fitness, technology, photography. Which one do I pick? There is actually a way to analyze these niches and then choose the best one for you. So that way you can be consistent in a large market and have your channel blow up hard harder than an atomic bomb. The first thing that we need to analyze is the TAM or the total addressable market. This means the amount of people that are actually interested in your topic. So let's say that you're interested in baseball. The first step would be to go on Google Trends and then just look up your keyword. Now change the graph to the last 12 months, change the web search to YouTube search. Looking at this graph, there's clearly a huge interest in baseball on YouTube. And as you can see, the interest level is already past 90, so it passes level one by a mile. But if I were to look up a niche sport like spike ball, then the interest level is only 25. And if we take it one step farther to compare spike ball to baseball, it becomes very clear that baseball has a much larger total addressable market. And that makes it the better niche. The next step in finding whether this niche is right to pursue is simply taking a look at it on YouTube. We are going to look at the baseball niche for an example. So all you have to do is look up baseball on YouTube. So you go to baseball and scroll through and just see what kind of videos pop up. For example, momentum, they 200,000 views. <laughs> they have a whole baseball channel getting a ton of views, right? So if you wanted to make a baseball channel, that's a pretty good sign that someone is already getting views on it, right? Obviously you have the MLB, but we don't wanna look at them because we can't really replicate them. Lap Bros, check them out. Yeah, again, all baseball, they're getting you know 600,000 views, 210,000 views, 150,000 views. I tried every baseball food, 100,000 views. So there's clearly a potential to get views Today. in this niche, right? And if you keep scrolling down, you'll see even more. MLB Top Plays Part 6, 2024 highlights. Bam, it's just another channel just showing highlights and stuff like that, and they're getting hundreds of thousands of views. So obviously this is a very good niche. But if we were to look up another niche, like let's say car rentals in Cairo, clearly there is not that many views to be had here, right? There's rental car ones, but not in Cairo, right? This is probably not a very good niche to go into. Boom, 12 views, 99 views, nothing crazy, right? So this is an extreme example, but you really don't want to uh, go into a niche that has no view potential. So you wanna look at the videos in that niche and then figure out which ones actually have the potential to get views. So just test it out, look up your niche before you hop into it. And as long as you do that, and there's some channels getting over a couple hundred thousand views, you should be good. So now we know that this is a good niche, but we have to make sure that we can actually compete in it because most small YouTubers will simply just copy these other channels, which leads to them looking like every other person in their market. I did that my first two years on YouTube, so trust me when I say that I know the struggle of posting a video that you think is great and then seeing the results of it only having a couple hundred views. It sucks, it feels unfair, but I guarantee you it's not your fault. No one has taught you that viewers are only attracted to the biggest figures in their space. So when you replicate their videos, it's no wonder that the viewers don't watch because they could simply watch that other person. But fortunately, there's an easy fix to this problem. And once you understand it, you'll be able to 100X your views because the stuff you're making is content that people want and there is no competition, which will allow you to go viral as f and have 2024 be the first year that you take YouTube full time. One of my favorite books ever was released in 2004 by W. Chan Kim. It's the exact same book that Jake Tran read one month before he blew up on social media. He attributes nearly all of his YouTube success to the information inside of this book, and I do too. It's called Blue Ocean Strategy. And it's the exact same book that allowed me to blow up my private client, Joel Kaplan's YouTube channel from 6,000 subs to 250,000 in under one year. The book's main idea is that there are two types of oceans. The first is a red ocean full of competition, 
where there is demand, but every single person is competing for it. The second is a blue ocean where someone creates a new market that no one is fishing in and then creates their own demand. And this is exactly what some of the biggest creators on the platform, like Mr. Beast, Alex Hormozzi, and Iman Gaji all have in common. They all created blue oceans. Now let's take a look at a creator who recently started and absolutely blew up in one of the most competitive niches on the planet. This is Ryan Doris. And as you can see, he's gone from zero to almost 300,000 subscribers in the last year. But what's even more impressive is that he did it in the productivity niche where hundreds of new channels are being created every single day. He did this by creating a blue ocean. So how do you create a blue ocean? Well, first you're going to look at all of the factors in your niche. For example, in my niche, we have camera quality, scripting, editing, demonstration, title, thumbnail, and information. That's about most of the elements in my space, right? That go into making a video. And you're essentially gonna write down everything that does go into making a video in your niche currently. Because to be honest, most niches are in red oceans, meaning the majority of people making content in that niche do something very similar. Now that you have all of the factors about what goes into making a video in your niche, you need to categorize them. And what I mean by that is we're gonna do four things. The first thing that we are going to do is raise the parts that we think are the most important. In my niche, YouTube growth, I think that the most important is title, thumbnail. So I'm gonna raise that, title, thumbnail. And I also think that editing is very important along with scripting. And also information, very important too. The next thing that we are going to do is eliminate the things that we think are not necessary. So for me, I don't think that the actual demonstration of the concepts themselves is that important. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. The next thing that we are going to do is reduce the ones that we think are still important, but maybe not of highest importance. And I think that would probably be camera quality here. I don't think camera quality matters so much. So we can definitely save on our budget there and reduce that because it's not super important, right? And the last thing that we are going to do is take a look at our niche and see what is missing. What, what is missing in our actual niche? So we can create a new element, right? And what I did with that is I added animations. I added animations. So I saw obviously what Iman Gaji did and a lot of other people in the business space. I saw that that was working really well. It's a great way to, you know, show concepts. And I thought, why not add that to the YouTube growth niche? So how you can do this for yourself is just write down everything, the entire process on what goes into making a video from, you know, editing, scripting, intros, thumbnails, titles, animations, B-roll, music, sound effects, all these different elements that go into it, right? Tonality in your voice, having actors, it really anything. It could be, could be literally anything. Just write it all down and then figure out what you want to eliminate, what you want to reduce, what you want to create, and what you want to raise the bar on. And what you can actually see is that some of the biggest creators did this for themselves. Um, if you look at Iman Gaji, what he did is he essentially looked at all the business videos that were going on at the time, which had a lot of pictures, a lot of screenshots, um, maybe some B-roll in there, just some pretty basic stuff. But what he did is just raise the animations. No one had ever done that before. He was the first one to innovate, to hire a real animator for like $80,000 a year. I'm not sure how much he paid him, but probably 80 to $120,000 a year, which most creators could not afford. However, he could, and he saw that he could separate himself from everyone else by hiring a full-time animator. And now animators are much cheaper because he commoditized that entire space but back then it was very expensive. Another thing that he did is he looked at all of the people in the business space and he realized that none of them were really taking it seriously and writing very extensive copy, which is essentially the words that you write to try to sell people on watching the video. So he got into copywriting and he raised that section of it. So he hired a full-time scriptwriter. I'm sure he did some scripts by himself at some point, but he essentially just made sure that every video was optimized to the max on the scripting side. And the last thing that he did while well, everyone else in the business space was like, oh, you know, business is boring. It doesn't need to be interesting. It doesn't need to be like super high quality. It just needs to have good information. All he did was just take that and be like, what if we did make it high quality? And he made some of the best title and thumbnails on the platform. Titles slash thumbs. And he raised that. So those were the things that he saw were lacking that if he put more importance on, he could stand out from every other person on the market. So I wanna ask you how you can do this for your own channel to create your own blue ocean. For example, now the Iman Gaji style is a red ocean. It turned from blue to red, right? The people who first hopped on it had a lot of success. And obviously Iman had the most success because he created it. 
However, now everyone is doing it. Another example of a blue ocean would be a business creator named Daniel Dalen. Now, what he's doing to blow up hard right now, he was at like not even 10,000 subscribers like three months ago. Like he's just getting started and he's already at 50,000 by the time we're recording this video. I'm sure honestly, probably by the time we post it, he'll be close to 100,000 subscribers. What he did differently is he saw that no one in the business space was showing what it was really like to grow their business, like showing the ups and downs. Everyone was just talking about it. No one was showing it. So that's the element of the business niche that he really innovated on and he made more important than everything else. He reduced the animations because he thought that they were not as important. And all he did was raise the authenticity. He raised the authenticity, he raised the cinematography, and he just was himself. He looked at the things that people weren't doing in the business space and thought, what would happen if we raised these things? What would happen if I literally documented all the up and downs, made it look like a movie, and was completely myself while I was doing it? I'm not trying to try to play a character, I'm just gonna be myself be really authentic and share what's happening in my business and the, the struggles I'm going through. And in turn, that was a blue ocean. No one had done that before. So he wasn't competing with Iman Gaji. He wasn't competing with Alex Hormozzi. All he was doing was just making a new style of content and he's gonna be at 100,000 subs in the next month or so. But creating a blue ocean is just the first step. To properly launch a channel, I've put together a strategy that almost guarantees that one of your first four videos will hit. Because if you look at each of these small channels, you'll notice they all have one thing in common. They all did well from the very start. And let me tell you right now, it wasn't luck, it wasn't their video tags, and it definitely wasn't because they posted at the right time. It was because they understood the importance of initial concept testing, which looks exactly like this. I got this concept from my good friend Leroy. You can follow him on Twitter. I think he's just at Leroy Turbrock. Absolutely phenomenal guy, really smart about YouTube. This concept I think can help a ton of people and it looks like this. These should be your first four videos. Now, you'll notice that they all have different letters. One A, one B, one C, and one D. And what that indicates is that these are all different styles of video. So maybe one A is more of a vlog style video. One B is more of a sit down talking head video. One C is maybe just an iPhone video. Each of these are different ways of presenting the information that you're trying to get across to people. And it's very important to test these when you're first starting out. The reason why we do this is because it gives you a much better chance of actually blowing up. Because if you make one style of content, the most likely scenario is that it's not going to instantly hit. It usually just takes a while to grow on YouTube, but you can fast track that by getting more data sooner. But the reason why most people don't blow up is because they post a video in a certain style, it doesn't get any views. They're like, okay, that's my first video, all good. I'll just post another one. They post another one, same style, doesn't do well. They're like, okay, if I just keep posting, I'll eventually blow up. And that is not the case. If your content is not getting the views that you want it to, it is not the algorithm's fault but it's also not your fault. It's just because you haven't tested enough stuff and you don't understand this concept yet. So let's go ahead and break it down. YouTube favors certain styles at different times. And obviously like we were talking about with blue oceans, some styles have never been done before and can do a lot better than others. So instead of posting the same kind of style over and over again and hoping it blows up, what you can do is just fast track that by making a bunch of different styles and testing which one does the best. Now, once you've tested four to eight different styles, see which one does the best and then just double down on it, right? If one gets a couple thousand views versus the others just get a couple hundred, then double down on the one that gets a couple thousand. It's much more likely that you're gonna grow a lot faster when you do that versus just making you know, style A every single time. If you do this when you first launch a channel or you know, if your channel is stagnated right now and you're trying to break out of the small YouTube prison, then this is the best way to do it. But we still need to come up with some viral video ideas because no matter how good your style is, if your video ideas suck, no one is gonna wanna watch them. And this is why 99% of small YouTube channels do not get views because most people don't know where to find good ideas and in what order to make them. But I'm telling you right now, it's not that hard and every single one of you watching can do it. All you have to do is follow this posting strategy that I'm about to share with you right now. The first video on any new channel, especially an educational channel, should always be a story video. This tells your viewer exactly who you are, what you've done, and builds credibility for the long term. You can set this video as your channel trailer so that every person who clicks on your channel will start to build that parasocial relationship with you from the start. The second video that you wanna post is called a VSL or virtual sales letter. If you have a business, this will be a video directing people to your landing page or a book a call link. And if that sounded like a foreign language to you or you don't have a business, don't worry. All this video needs to be for you is a super valuable in-depth video that you think people would get a lot of value from and subscribe to your channel. You then want to direct every single video that you post in the future back to this video so that 
every single time you post, this video gets more and more views. You can do this by telling people to watch it from the first link in your description or just adding it as the end screen of your video. This also means that every single time you post, your viewers have a clear next step of where to go. Some great examples of this are this video by Iman Gaji, this one from Ali Abdal, and this one from me, where I show you how to get access to my free YouTube course with over 12 hours of content. And that free course literally shows you everything that you need to know to go from zero to 100,000 subscribers in 2024. And if you'd like to get access to that, it's the first link in the description. The third and fourth videos that you should post are blue ocean videos where you're trying out new styles to see if you can find one that'll blow up for you. And to find these ideas, I like to use a process called niche comparison theory. It looks like this. Let's say you have an iPhone tech channel. Let's say you have an Android tech channel. And let's say you have a tech channel in general, right? So let's say iPhone, Android, and then tech. So what you're going to do, let's say you're in the iPhone niche, right? You're not in the Android niche, you're not in the tech niche, but those niches obviously still exist. What you're going to do is take ideas from these similar niches that are not your own and then bring them back to your niche. So you're essentially going to take ideas from the Android niche and bring them to iPhone. You're going to take ideas from the tech niche and translate it to iPhone, right? So for example, let's say someone in the Android niche had a video that went viral. 17 Android apps you need but don't know about. That concept, you could just take that to iPhone and you could say, 17 iPhone apps you need but don't know about. That is just a great idea and if the video is already proven to go viral in this niche, it's very likely that it's going to go viral in your niche as well. So what you're doing is essentially just taking a bunch of ideas. I like to come up with an hour of ideas every single day and you're taking those ideas from other niches and bringing them back to your own. And the reason why we do this is because in that new niche, those ideas have zero competition, which allows you to get views extremely easily, blow up your channel, and then eventually make YouTube your full-time job. Now, you can look at a bunch of different channels. Like we could add, let's say, FPV drones. We could also add another niche. We could also add cameras. And then you can just take all those ideas, bring them back to the iPhone niche, and just absolutely crush it with a channel making videos that no one has ever seen before that are already proven to work. It is literally the closest thing that you can get to a cheat code on YouTube. Once you've come up with 50 to 100 of these ideas, you just have to choose the best one and then make it. And one simple trick to make your ideas even better is a little known strategy that I learned privately from Iman Gaji's creative director. He told me one thing that changed the way I think about ideas forever. He said that if you have under 100,000 subscribers, your content should never be how I. It instead should be how to. But but when you have over 100,000 subs, you can start to reverse it. And I see this mistake all of the time. So many small channels make videos titled how I make X per month online. But the problem is that nobody knows them, so no one really cares. Instead, taking the angle how to make X per month online is so much stronger since it now applies to everyone and not just the people who know you. Obviously, you need a better idea than that, but the concept holds true. This simple change can make a huge difference in your channel. Instead of making a day in my life video, you could make a video titled the best matcha in New York City ranked. Now someone who doesn't know you has a reason to click on that video. I mean, if I was in New York City, I like matcha, I would watch it. Now that you have great ideas, different styles to test, and the best launch strategy on the internet, it's time for you to go and take action. Film a video, edit it, and get it live ASAP. Because the number one thing that holds most YouTubers back is simply not starting. And that's exactly why I put together my free YouTube course with over 12 hours of lessons that shows you everything that you need to know to go from zero to 100,000 subscribers. Completely for free, so you don't have any excuse not to start. In total, we have seven modules where we cover strategy, packaging, scripting, filming, editing, analytics, and monetization. I believe that everyone should have equal access to education. So my promise to you is that despite all of these gurus charging you $997 for their course, mine will stay completely free forever. So click here to find out what you'll learn, what results you can expect to see, and how to get access. Thanks and have a great day.